Hello, I just wanted to show you something that was uh, a little bit different from what I'm you know, usually showing, which is PCs and Laserdiscs. Um, I do want to get back to the PC stuff, but uh, I'm currently moving a lot of stuff from one place to the other. So as soon as I've done all that, I'll show a few more PC videos. Um, in the meantime, I just thought it would be interesting to show you the inside of a VCR. There's plenty of videos here on YouTube that basically show and demonstrate the inside of the VCR and uh, explain in, in great detail uh, about the inside of the VCR. Now there isn't, there should be, uh, but I'm sure there is. But um, what I'm going to do here for us is just open it up, show you the inside and um, go through the uh, bit of history that I have with this particular machine. Um, now I had through with this the last time I tried to open it up. Oh, there we go. Keep the clip at the back. So this is a a, a late model uh, VCO. It's not one of the it's not one of the older models. I haven't got it plugged in at the minute, so we'll be able to we'll be able to stand it up and get a better view of what's going on on the inside. Okay, so on some of the later models, this particular one doesn't have it. But um, as you can see there, it's 2001, 26th of the 6th, okay, that's when little motor was put in here. Probably the rest was built around at the same time. This would be my second last uh, VCR that I purchased, um, or oh, actually third last. Um, I bought a Sony after this, and I also have a Sanyo. Now the picture from the Sony compared to this fella is absolutely rubbish. Um, I was actually playing it back only last night. Um, and show, show my wife the pictures and saying, look, what do you think of this? And she's saying, God, you know, and there's there's no way you could actually possibly watch, you know, film from one of these VCOs because the picture is that bad. It's so poor. So I said, you know, I don't remember it being that poor from this particular model. Although this model was actually pretty good and one of the better ones, and that's why I kept it. And lo and behold, the picture quality was playing back better than the Sony, but there was still a little bit of a problem with it. So I cleaned the video head. Now the video head, to clean a video head on the VCR, you always go from bottom to top, like this. Don't ever go cleaning this direction. Okay, so bottom to top, this way. All right, so you're basically going against the lines that are actually on the, the video head itself. Um, this is the Nikon digital stereo version um, as well of this particular VCR. This is what's known as a Mitsubishi Black Diamond. Now Mitsubishi used to sell VCRs uh, here in Ireland. I don't know about anywhere else in the world, I'm just going to say Ireland they used to sell VCRs under the Mitsubishi brand now. But what happened after a while was Mitsubishi were no longer interested in supplying and selling electronic devices. They were diversifying their, their product portfolio or whatever. So a couple of the Irish directors that ran the company decided, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll buy the company and we call it Mitsubishi Black Diamond. So for a long time, what you had was the Mitsubishi uh, uh, brand name put on top of Black Diamond and then eventually it just became Black Diamond and then that disappeared and as far as I know the same guy is now running a company called Normende um, now Normende that's the stuff they're running now and you know par excellence of course you know now <clears throat> inside the VCR uh, itself yeah, we've got obviously we've got the this is the reading head this is the erasing head. The actual tape hits the head, or is placed against the head, and that's how the media is read. Um, this basically means it's a contact medium, so the more times you play back the tape, the more worn the tape will become, and of course your picture will degrade over time. Um, to lessen this to an extent, the idea would be to keep the head clean, and make sure your tapes, tapes are kept in, a, in, a, in a, you know, a, the proper environment. Uh, damp tapes or tapes that have gotten fungus on them, or you know, the, you know, any sort of white on the tape itself, or if you can see white inside the window, best just to get rid of that tape, uh, or use it in a drive where you know you're not too concerned because the oxidation of the tape can can, can basically cause problems insofar as it can basically end up with the tape itself uh, de-sticking itself stick it onto the video head and degrading the video head. Now in most cases that can be wiped off with a bit of uh, ice or alcohol so generally it's not, 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 not too much of a problem. That's the other thing I was saying about the head is when you're cleaning it, like I said, clean it bottom to top and uh, basically what you want to do is you want to be using something like ice or alcohol, something that's um, you know is, is, is a cleaner that's actually going to self-dry itself. You can also get of course cleaning tapes as well. Um, 
they do they do work somewhat, but better still is to clean it yourself manually. On some more modern machines, and actually inside the Sony I took apart yesterday, and um, there's a little cleaning uh, head, little cleaning arm. It actually comes in from the let me see, I've got to go to the side. It actually comes in from the back, so it's usually over about here, and it basically comes into the into the actual video head and actually cleans it and comes back out again. And it does this every now and then to keep the video head clean. Um, they somewhat work, but then again, of course, the video head cleaner is inside the VCR. So, of course, what's going to happen after time, it's also going to get dirty, and it's then going to be transferring the dirt back to the, to the actual video head itself. Um, so, it's not exactly the ideal situation. Um, so, what I'm going to do, uh, well, obviously what you're seeing here at the moment are, are different angles and different variations of the videotape being put in, in, inside and out of the machine. Um, this machine is also a stereo machine, which uh, you know is interesting, I suppose. Uh, the fact that the stereo, Nikon stereo, that was the big thing back in the day, Nikon stereo surround. Um, it's also um, listed as VHS HQ. Um, not too sure what that means, but um, the video playback quality of it is very good. What we will do is we will I'll demonstrate this particular machine playing back video uh, through the scaler onto the screen, so that'll be the videotape. I'll demonstrate the laser disc of this because I've got it on laser disc, and then I'll demonstrate the DVD of it so we can then do a, a, a three piece comparison of the three uh, video formats. And with a bit of luck, we'll be able to see the difference between the three of them and uh, make a judgment as to which one looks the best. So uh, I'll just stop the tape. The tape has stopped playing, but you can see it's still around the head ready to go. After a short while, there's actually a, a delay, so after a while what will happen is the video head will stop spinning, the tape will go back into the mechanism and it will just stay stopped. And um, I'll just turn off the machine and see what happens. So that's stopped now, I'll just turn it off. So without ejecting. There you go. See? So basically the tape is still left open inside the mechanism. The head is no longer spinning, but the machine is very much still alive. Um, there's still very much so power inside. So we'll turn it back on again. So tape it back up. Play again. They're a very robust, as some other guy commented, they're actually a very robust mechanism. Um, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, not what I would call a uh, Flim flam mechanism, actually quite good, quite strong, and not a lot to go wrong on them either. Um, I'm trying to, I was trying to see earlier on was there any belts or pulleys within inside the drive, and uh, I can't say that I saw any, but um, we'll have a quick look now and just, just see if we can see any, any belts, drives, or pulleys inside the machine. I don't think there is any, but um, it would, will be interesting to see if there is any inside it. So uh, let's uh, eject the tape, stop the tape. I'm going to eject the tape. And uh, see there's any pulleys inside it. I'm sure there's actually one pulley in it somewhere. It doesn't make any sense that there isn't any. Now the motor is direct drive. And this is the motor here. So it's direct driving the gears that are here. So that's all direct drive. And so a tension, I think there's a tensioner pulley on one side actually, that's the only thing I can see. Um, I think there's a tensioner pulley there. It's hard to know. No, I don't see it, I, don't, I certainly don't see that anyway. Um, yeah, if there is, uh, leave a comment in the in in section below because um, I was looking for very wrong on two machines, this machine and the other one, and I, I certainly couldn't find it. Um, any sort of pulleys that are inside the machine just don't seem to exist. Um, let's have a look at the machine itself in a bit more detail. I've got it off now. The front. I'm trying to take out the plug. Sorry about that. I'm going to take out the old plug there. Not that it's going to make much difference. Does uh, the capacitor stay charged? Um, I don't recommend you open up your own VCR or any products unless you know what the hell you're doing, um, because uh, you can't damage them. So uh, yeah, Video Plus was quite a nice little system. Um, back in the day when you were programming a VCR with the old dials or whatever, um, you had to pick the day of the week and so on and so forth, you had to set the time, 
Um, as VCO have progressed, they actually set the time automatically using the signal from a TV channel. Um, Video Plus, which I still think is in some magazines, I, I don't buy the, the TV guide as much as I used to, but you see a little number at the end of the actual uh, program, so we'll have a number at the end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever. Basically, that number you type into your, your VCR's memory, and it will automatically go to the channel, uh, you know, BBC One, RTE, or whatever that is, automatically go to the channel and record it for the, the specified time. Nowadays, of course, we just, you know, use our, you know, Skybox or Horizon Virgin Media Box, and we just basically, you know, we, we can actually see a whole list of everyday's programs for the next couple of friggin' weeks. So we're kind of spoiled nowadays. But that was the way we had to do it back in the day, was using the Video Plus system, or simply pick a channel, pick a time when record, Starting time, ending time, that's basically it, you know. Um, just move it, move it along here a bit now. I think I've got that too tight on it, yeah. So, six head hi fi stereo system, compatible with 16.9. 16.9 is the screen, um, is uh, uh, the basically your, your screen size. Uh, TVs back in the day, uh, even when this was around, were generally 4.3. Or academy ratio. So 169 is the is the is the actual size of screen that uh, most uh, what's the word for it? which most TVs nowadays would be basically able to use. It's basically this other word is his other you know name is widescreen. So in other words, you've got a widescreen presentation videotape and you play it back on this machine, it will actually output it in the proper aspect ratio. A lot of VCRs won't do that; they just output it any way they want it. Uh, which is usually 4 3 pan and scan. Okay, we'll um, put the uh, core back on. Hope we haven't uh, broken the machine. And um, is there anything else? Yeah, I had uh, another Mitsubishi before this actually. Another Mitsubishi VCR. But uh, it actually stopped working. So that's why I ended up with this one. Um, <clears throat> basically what happened was the VCR, I can't remember what the damage was, but something wrong with it. There was a, every time you put a tape in it was tuning up. I think one of the heads was gone. Or, one of the things that popped off or something, a cog was out. I don't really, really don't remember. Um, but uh, what happened was, anyway, was the uh, repairman, was uncertain of the repairman, had said that it's not, not really feasible to fix the problem that you have. So, what we'll do is, uh, for the same price, we can actually sell you a brand new machine. So I said, well, what have you got in the system? And he said, uh, well, I've got these lovely Mitsubishi Black Diamonds in. Um, so I says, yeah, okay, I'll have one of them. So uh, that's how I ended up with this fella. But um, yeah, I had a Mitsubishi uh, Nikon version before this, but uh, yeah, it's long gone, I'm afraid. It's uh, been recycled. So uh, okay, what we'll do next is we will play back, uh, we play back the videotape, we play back the laser disc, and then we play back the DVD, and uh, let's go. All right, the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, play the videotape, see what it looks like. 
Now, uh, <clears throat> yesterday when I played the videotape, it uh, kind of mucked up and went all weird on me. Obviously, I won't do that. So far, so good. That's my big head. Yeah, I'm using the projector just in case you're wondering. And uh, get the old, uh, trigger the old uh, warning in there. It's going to get this set up actually. Apologies if it's off a little bit. And indeed, there actually is a little, um, uh, what's the word for the actual turn of ending at the end of it, yeah? Obviously the videotape playing back here. My name is Ash, and I am a slave. And the settings I'm using are the same settings I'm going to use for the uh, laser disc. Um, and I use the same settings again then for the uh, DVD. But uh, this is basically the videotape playing back here. Um, hardware out well. Shop smart, shop S smart. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful girlfriend, Linda. All right. So that's the uh, together we drove to a small video tape in the mountains. I'm gonna play for another minute, and um, I'll make sure I talk over most of it, so we're not doing for copyright. It seems an archaeologist had come to this remote place to translate and study his latest find. Necronomicon ex mortis, the book of the dead. Found in human flesh and inked in blood, this ancient Sumerian text contained bizarre burial rites, funerary incantations, and demon resurrection. Alright, you'll turn the uh, lights on now, so this might get washed out. Never meant for the world. Hey! Yes, this got washed out. The book awoke something. Right, I'm going to show you the uh, videotape cover, just to give you an idea of what, what's what here. Hold on. So, this is the actual cover. On the uh, video tape that I have. Then we have the uh, laser disc version. It came back. Uh, I also have the uh, DVD, but uh, yeah, I have to dig that up in a minute. I do have it. So uh, that's the edition. Let's just go back to the movie for a minute. Lights off. I think that's enough. Let's get the laser disc on. All right, and now we have the laser disc version. I actually think the start of it is uh, quite good, actually, on this. Um, but uh, yeah, be interesting to see whether the uh, does it look does it look any better?
My name is Ash, and I am a slave. Close as I can figure it. I'll tell you one thing I noticed is the uh, sound separation is a bit better already. Right? It wasn't always like that. Chain sounded a bit more chainy. I had a real life once. A job. Um, hardware out well. Shop smart, shop, shop smart. smart. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful girlfriend, Linda. <laughs> so, let's see if we can find the, uh, to a small cabin in the mountains. I'm just going to turn the lights back on again so they don't get done with this thing. Oh! It seems an archaeologist had come to this remote place to translate and study his latest finds. Actually, you can it's see it better, can't you? Ex mortis. Even though the lights are actually the on. Where's Army there? Of the dead. Found in yeah, that's gonna be a and ink and blood. This ancient Sumerian text contained bizarre burial rites, funerary incantations, and demon resurrection passages. It was never meant for the world of the living. The book awoke something dark in the woods. Uh, here's the uh, DVD belongs to uh, Par 3 that I'm going to use. It got into my hand right. and went bad. I'll put back on the video so for a sec. it off at the wrist. But that didn't stop it. It came back. Big time. I actually have the uh, Evil Dead number two on videotape on DVD and on laser disc. Of course, the Blood Red laser disc. course of the laser disc over the videotape um, if you if you think the picture is the same quality is the fact that the laser disc will never wear out with the videotape over playing and playing and playing will become more worn out but um, as I explained already keep your equipment clean and your uh, videotapes will last that bit longer at the end of the day you know what I mean there's only so many times you're gonna play the videotape anyway so you're gonna be playing it a hell of a lot a lot for a hell of a lot long time, makes no sense, but we played the videotape for a long long time before I actually will get worn out anyway. Um, okay, we'll uh, come back in a minute, I'm going to switch over now to the uh, DVD, so uh, join me again for uh, the third and final part of this. So that's my head again, hello, that's me in the shadow, I'm uh, here with Bruce and the lads, look, hello, that's what happens when you have a projector, you can't stand up. Alright, and now we're on to the uh, DVD, so here we go. Sound is even better again on the DVD, my friend. Even better separation. And it's also filling more of the screen, I'm noticing. Uh, so much so, I'm missing the top of it. And basically, I've set the, the video to the same on each Ash. disc, so I have a, a video setting set up and I've kept it for all the playbacks. So I haven't changed the uh, you know color settings and that sort of stuff. I basically set them all to the laser disc setting, and so it's the same setting all the way. So I'm not interfering with that um, to make it fair, of course. And in the videotapes instance, I have a converter which is converting the uh, SCART analog signal to um, HDMI and into the amp and then it's giving an L clean. On the laser disk drive I have the video out to the drive which is then clean to the uh, Moran amp which is you know using its cone filter. So, so far we have the videotape to its own machine. 
the, the laser drive to the Marantz and the DVD drive is also going straight to the Marantz with a SCART lead and an or a red, red, green, blue output. So it's separating out the red, green, blue because DVD is actually recorded in red, green, blue whereas laser disc and videotape aren't, they're an analog format. Um, picture quality was, the only thing I'm noticing here difference is colour saturation, colour separation I suppose. Um, the detail is about the same, I can't say I can see any difference there. Um, but uh, there's a lot less artefacts on the screen. Uh, compared to the video tape and the actual laser disc. Um, what we'll do here actually is we will we can actually go forward one because I've still got the laser disc playing in the background. So what I'll do is I will jump over to that. Tell you what, I'll see what the projector does with the signal. So I have to project it to the signal because I actually have it set up with that as well. So let's see what the vector does. So that's what the projector interprets today's this signal as. Now you see the thing with it is we can actually change that. So let's actually see if we can change that, right? Let's do a memory load on this. I think I set it for that one before. Probably is that one, yeah. That look better? Get the sound sync back up. Is that one wrong one? Whoop. Now I don't have the projector uh, playing with the DVD signal, of course. Um, I'll fast forward the DVD so we get to the same section here. The video tape is still playing back, so we can go back to that in a minute. Not one of my glasses. Who are you? Who wants to know? I am Henry the Red, Duke of Shea. Not memory low. We go back to input select. Now I'm going to go back to this beauty. Hopefully, this one is still playing the back. That's a great line. Huh? I got news for you, pal. You ain't leading but two things right now Jack and shit. And Jack left town. Shut your face I think the amp does a good job of bringing a bit more life into the picture, all right, I have to say. So, you know, I don't think we should be ditching the amp just yet. It will be interesting to see if the amp would make of the pure video signal actually from the video player. But um, I haven't set that up because I was only just messing with the video tape um, recently. So, um, we can. We'll do this on the floor. We'll do this live as if it were. Um, I'll stop. I have to stop the laser drive actually. Come on. Because I can't. I have it set up. I have two at once here at the same time, basically. The other major advantage of the laser disc, of course, over the videotape is the fact that you can, you know, like a DVD, you can go straight to a chapter. Uh, whereas, of course, with the uh, with the videotape, you know, to go to the next chapter, as if it were, in inverted commas, is to fast forward the tape. So it's kind of a bit of a bore. Now, there's the old. Mm-hmm. Hello here. There it is. Okay. How's that? The meditation going back up for us now. Yeah, she's fast forwarding. Let's get her the play there. It's rewinding there. Oops. Let's bring it back a bit, huh? Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot more artifacts on the screen with the old uh, videotape, but it's not bad, the old picture, is it? It's not bad. I'm sorry, Sheila. You see, there's a, a couple of lines appearing there in her face, and that which. Uh, are also not there on the lasers, but they are there on this. It's definitely blocker, but it's not too bad. But um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, another brief video. Um, so uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you again.